Namaskar. I'd like to, at the outset, thank the Heritage Society, Patna, for asking me uh, to do this lecture. Because uh, at this juncture in our lives, during the lockdown, a lot of thinking is happening. A lot of introspection is happening. So it is always nice to be asked to talk about one's own experiences. And when I was asked what would be the topic, I decided to do this topic, which is, I think, um, for me, very special because uh, I have actually encountered the one major part of the history of Bharatanatyam through my various gurus. So I thought I would take this opportunity to actually go down memory lane and try to see the history of Bharatanatyam because I would be completing almost 50 years teaching, learning, dancing, choreographing, watching more than anything else what Bharatanatyam has gone through. Um, and I feel honored to be blessed actually to have had the opportunity to learn from some of the absolutely fabulous teachers who taught me. Because I think Guru in our tradition, when we talk about tradition, we can't talk about tradition without the Guru. Akhanda mandala karam vyaptam yena chara charam tatpadam darshitam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha agyana timirandhasya nyananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha when we say these things and we understanding understanding the meaning and the import of what these shlokas mean it brings really a lump in your throat because you would be nowhere without this tradition being handed down to us by these great gurus who were so giving and who were so full of compassion that brings me to a very important part art brings compassion i really feel that and in this time of lockdown when we are all so confused so restless i think it is this passion of the arts that has really helped many of us survive many of us stay afloat and many of us i think stay happy and make the people around us happy with the art forms that we are practicing i started learning bharatanatyam when i was five and uh, my teacher my first teacher srimati swarna saraswati born in 1921 she was born in 1921 and she had her harangetram in 1931 and 1931 was the year when Bharatanatyam actually came on its own, known as Bharatanatyam. Before that, it was known by many different other names like Sadiv, Chinnamelam, etc. It got the stamp of so-called credibility in 1931 when it was presented on stage for the first time at the Music Academy. And that was the year my teacher had her arrangement. So it's a strange coincidence. And then, of course, in 1936, Kalakshitra was set up. So this is the recent history of Bharatanatyam, I would say. But again, I was told that uh, in this talk, there are many people who really don't know anything about the classical arts. And it is true that today's generation takes pride in saying that they know nothing about the Indian tradition and Indian arts, which I find extremely painful. They know everything about, uh, you know, the Western tradition, Western history, Western culture. But when it comes to Indian culture and we have failed as educators because we have not managed to give them that sense of pride in our heritage and in our culture and in our Tharova. So that's a sad part. And we have to correct that by bringing in arts education and integrating it and making a part of the syllabus, which has been my um, great endeavor in the last few years. And I, I plan to further take it forward and see what I can do to my best of my capacity. 
tradition in transition. That's the subject that I am here to talk about. As you all know, Bharatanatyam is one of the classical dance forms of this beautiful country. It comes from Tamil Nadu. And even today, if you go to the beautiful temples in Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu, uh, the temples are not you know, small um, uh, temples like the Havelis that we talk about uh, in uh, Uttar Pradesh or in Rajasthan. These are kilometers <laughs> of temple. So the, the city is defined by the temple. So uh, we're talking about those kind of temples which nurtured the arts. So you see a part of it even living today. You will see another Swaram player playing as you enter the temple. As you go inside, you see the beautiful sculptures portraying deities dancing or dancers dancing, taking beautiful postures, which we try to recreate in our dance even today. So you see the temple ritual, which is followed very in a very detailed fashion, where there is different kinds of shringars, different kinds of times when the god has his own routine and you see how the rituals are all um, uh, encompassing this uh, uh, the whole life of the uh, deity that you're talking about the beautiful decoration that you see the aesthetics that you see in the temple so i think all this is still today living in the in the temples and the connect is absolutely true and there for you to see. So it's not just that you pick it up from the books, but one visit to any of these beautiful temples can immediately help you correlate what you see on stage or what the dancer is trying to recreate. So for me, I think it's been a learning experience. It's been an experiential process of immersion in the dance. It's not picked up from books necessarily. It is Guru Mukham, what you say, from the Guru. So my first teacher was a very, very interesting person because she belonged to the Isabella community, as they say, the, the dancers belong to that community and they could only dance at a particular time in history. And she came from that tradition. And when I was five, I was taken to her by my mother, with my mother, and my mother took me. and. Um, I saw this woman beautifully seated there with diamonds on both nose rings with the taktikari. In Bharatanatyam, we teach with a wooden, um, uh, you know, a, a small uh, um, piece of wood and another piece of wood with which we strike. And she was there sitting in a beautiful Kanjivan sari. And um, uh, she was watching as I entered. And that was the beginning my first class or my first entry into this beautiful world of Bharatanatyam, which I don't know what I would have done if I did not dance and if I did not learn to dance. So uh, I was with her for many, many years and I had my Rangetram when I was 14. And what I learned from her, what is that tradition that I learned from her? Today, when I think back, from age five to age 16 or 17, I was with her. I think the most important thing that I learned from her is that art or dance or natyam, as we call it, is not a single form of art that you can learn. You have to learn music. You have to learn poetry. You have to learn to play an instrument. You have to know languages. All this was part of the learning and the process of learning Natya. Because today, this is why I'm saying this is very important because today everything has been compartmentalized and nobody views the other's work. And we come from a tradition which is a composite tradition. You know, the sculptor couldn't have sculpted if he had not attended dance programs and seen musicians, how can you actually create a sculpt, a, a musician playing an instrument in that beautiful fashion where you are actually 
ready to beat an instrument how can you catch that moment how can you catch the body angle so beautifully if you are not immersed in watching and hearing and listening and taking that whole environment into yourself and then creating what you are creating so i think all this is very very important and part and parcel of the tradition that we come from and uh, because when i talk about transition this is a very important part of it that's why i am talking about this what else did i learn from her the most important lesson again which i feel my dance or my natyam today is sometimes i feel not able to come to the marketplace and do something is because of that early years of training with swarnama where she always said or through her art she said that dance is something that has to fill the soul and you have to dance and the rasa has to just seep into you and for not even one moment had i felt that her dance was to please someone her dance was for herself and she poured everything that she had into that process of dancing because she danced for herself and i think that is such an important lesson that i have carried and it's so ingrained in me that i find it sometimes difficult to dance for a particular audience or a particular occasion though we have trained ourselves subsequently to do that but that was a great lesson that dance or natyam need not necessarily be for this and there can be another dimension to it where natyam is for self engagement for self refinement for filling your soul with something so aesthetic and beautiful the other lesson that i have to say from the tradition is that she never allowed a notebook into the class it has to be a shruti smriti learning in the sense you had to listen and memorize so there were no notebooks there were no recordings there was nothing in the learning process so i have to tell this because traditionally that was the way of learning because they felt that if you were engaged in writing and recording you would not be there or with all your senses absorbing what was taught so this was a very important lesson again that i learned of watching the teacher like a hawk every movement every nuance because she would never repeat it that was her skill she would teach us something one class and next class when we went it would be something completely different so only an intelligent dancer a dancer with great mental faculty which is alive and who had great memory could learn from a teacher like that so that is why they would always say you have to understand what the patra is and then put your big diksha into it so that was another lesson i learned from uh, sonama that uh, you can teach anything to anybody but a, a very intelligent teacher will teach according to the patra according to what the student is capable of and this is because of this because the absorption and how much you are able to take the capacity of the student is very important when you go to a teacher like swarna ma because that's why i feel, i feel her style has not really carried on that much because it's not possible there was so much intangible teaching that that intangible nuanced teaching is very hard to do and very hard to learn so i think uh, as we have proceeded uh, it's been structured codified i would say and uh, students tend to believe that this much is dance is this much is uh, you know as there is a syllabus there is a curriculum and you stick to it and but we were i think my first lesson and with her was that dance is a continuous learning because ne never was a piece 
we could say that a piece is finished and we finished learning because every time we saw her perform that piece or see her engage in teaching that piece there was a new idea there was a new take on it and there was a new flight and she could sing beautifully and she used to play the veena and she was a linguist she could speak many languages so we always had that very high bar that if you had to actually engage with the arts you needed to do all this so um, as we in in, in you know in uh, in our homes we say sakara kala vallabh vallabhi or sakara kala vallabhan so you know she was really like a sakala kala vallabhi because she she really was master of so many things that was my first teacher which was i think the foundation and which was the tradition as i encountered it through my first teacher and she used to call in her institution uh, the 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 kind of training she did was that she taught the very shastriya nritya in a very very formal traditional way in fact i i remember that written in one of the uh, brochures that she had for our annual days how she taught that's how she said this is the very traditional format and she never actually uh, you know she actually saw the entire transition of this art form moving on to the stage so i feel she also at that time had this strange feeling when she saw dance at that time the other dancers as to what is happening you know as though she is being disempowered you know as though there is there is something happening beyond her control this is what happened to the communities you know because dance was taken away in a sense moved and uh, democratized anybody could learn the form which was wonderful but think of the artists who actually had that beautiful thing all to themselves and they were very secure and then you see the sudden opening up it's like opening up of the markets and how the small enterprise doesn't know what to do it's the same kind of feeling that i feel amma had because she when she would discuss dance at that at that point or other dancers she would become quiet she would not want to talk or engage because at that time there were dancers who were performing who were great performers and she had no comments on them so i realized of course i was too young to analyze all this then but i realize it now how she would have felt my journey continued she took unwell and she could no longer teach me that was a sad moment for me because i had changed schools i had changed where i was living my location changed and there was this disconnect and i didn't know from disconnect with amma because amma couldn't teach anymore and i didn't know what to do and there were so many suggestions from well wishers i could go, go to ex teacher y teacher so and so and that that was a difficult time and the all the other teachers at that time gurus at that time were male teachers and i was so used to amma that for me to make the transition to learn from a male teacher was so hard though traditionally in the sevala community it was always the males who taught who accompanied the dancer but the dancer would be always female this is the tradition of bharatanatyam uh, the way it was uh, before it was democratized my second teacher of course there was briefly one teacher uh, sadashivam ji v sadashivam who was not a dancer who was a musician who but started teaching dance um for a few years i was with him i learned the musicality in dance from him again which was reinforcement of what amma was always talking about how every nuance of music had to be translated into dance so uh i was there with him for a few years and then i went to my a guru who again changed my whole perception of um dance that was a uh, younger brother of the great guru dandayudha pani pillai this guru was kn dakshinamurthy pillai who was in delhi 
and uh, who was teaching in Delhi. Uh, it was a, a complete change for me to come to Guru Dakshina Murthy Sahib. He, Amma was very daunting. Amma was very measured in the way she complimented. She actually never complimented anybody. She, um, uh, she was very strict. No questions asked in class. No dialogue. Nothing. And Dakshina Murthy Sir came all peppy. He came from the percussion side. He would play the Mridangam very well. So Talam was a game for him. So it was amazing to see this new possibility in dance. He was all about stagecraft. He would visualize a piece as to whether it would work on stage or not. That was his take uh, when he did a rhythmic bit or you know, so these were jatis of his older brother, Dandai the Pani Pillai. And he would see how 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 you could craft it on somebody who could perform these and who could actually take it on stage and transform it into visual magic visual um, arresting quality always be said that dance has to be arresting dance has to have those moments when people say wow you know so he came from a very different space and for me to make the transition was truly challenging because i was young and I had that energy to match his energy. And, uh, you know, at that time, what would you know about dancing for yourself, dancing for an audience? Everything was a challenge and you had to do your best. So with him, I had some fabulous time experimenting a lot with rhythm, doing, and he gave me a lot of freedom and he respected my training. He never questioned that training or he never actually tried to change things around. He built on that, which was a, a very, very important thing because, you know, he respected Amma so much. There was nobody who didn't respect Amma. Wherever I went, if I said I was one of my students, they would always say, oh, a chip of the old block, you know, and they would always respect her. So we started, I started dialoguing with him. I started experimenting with him. He gave me so much space to play around with what I wanted to do. And I started reading a lot and I started going to a lot of lectures and my engagement with dance became a different kind. It was more, I would say, multidimensional. And I would, I would always want to do something that has, uh, uh, that, that has so far not been done or something to add to what has already been done. That is how tradition slowly changes because already you have made the transition of it coming from a certain space onto the stage. And now on the stage, obviously, when you say something, the content, the context, and the way you say it is bound to change. And I think that change was what Dakshina Murthy sir was responding to or Dandai Dupani Pillai was responding to. And strangely, Dandai Dupani Pillai was one of the most sought after um, um, artists to choreograph for films. He, along with many other senior gurus at that time, that's why the quality of dance in films, in South Indian films particularly, was very good at a particular time. Because all these gurus were viewing the possibility of how dance could be moved on to the screen. And you could see that impact on stage as well. So you could see some of the, uh, you know, moments, some of the movements, some of the use of space because camera had no possibilities, all that coming into, into, into stage. And then the Panipuli were particularly known for, uh, for his jatis. He would have very, very strong jatis. So that was a very exciting period for me. My tradition was slowly shifting. I was in transition because, uh, I would, I would want to take it as a personal journey because uh, I think it is, I have seen it shift and around me things were shifting. The way people were presenting programs was different. It was no longer just the margam. 
which is in Bharatanatyam, we have a Margam, which is from the Alaripu to the Tillana, Alaripu, Jati, Swaram, Shaptam, Varnam, Padam, Javli, Tillana. These are all formats. And each, each format has a very, very specific aspect of the dance being highlighted. So there was a, a shift from the Margam. And uh, even the Margam was being tweaked. And we had a ma whole Margam dedicated to a deity or a whole Margam dedicated to one composer. So, so many things were happening at that time. And I enjoyed that process. Then came the time when Guruji was also, Guruji passed on. And then that was the time when I was on my own. I had already started teaching by then. And my whole take on pedagogy was being explored. That was a big, big transition for me because the way my teacher had taught, I could not teach that kind of adherence to, uh, to, to strictness, that kind of giving that much of time was not possible with the students. And I had to, and there was no presuming things at that time, you know, um, so, uh, teacher ko shayad uske bare mein itna kansen hum baise hi the humne kafi suna hua tha kafi dekha hua tha to jab hum dance mein jaate the to mythology hamare grandmothers ne hame sikhai thi to mujhe lagta hai ki un teachers ko un un, un areas pe kaam nahi karna pada lekin jab maine shuru kiya teaching shuru kiya to mujhe laga ki mujhe to ek aisa package banana hai jisme jahan jahan academic schools ki jo gaps hain wo mujhe fill karni hai jo formal education ki gaps hain to usme mythology bhi aata hai usme yog bhi aata hai usme philosophy bhi aata hai to mujhe laga ki bahut sari aisi cheeze hain jis pe mujhe dhyan dena padega agar hame artist taiyar karne hai sirf performer taiyar karna mera bilkul bhi irada nahi tha jab maine sikhana shuru kiya to pedagogy pe bahut dhyan diya aur जब हम सीखते थे तो कोई वार्म अप्स नहीं होता था कोई बॉडी कंडीशनिंग नहीं होती थी आते थे सीधा डांस करते थे तो मुझे सोचना पड़ा क्योंकि धीरे-धीरे बॉडी के बारे में सोचना बहुत जरूरी हो गया तो इसलिए काफी उसके बारे में भी सोचा और जब बच्चे आते थे तो पहले 20 मिनट या 30 मिनट बॉडी कंडीशनिंग और प्रिपरेशन में हम लोगों ने ध्यान दिया उसमें योग भी था उसमें स्पेसिफिक जो हमारी डांस शैली कि जो डिमांड्स होती हैं उसको लेके जो एक्सरसाइजेस हमने डिवाइस किए और सीखे बाकी एक्सपर्ट्स से तो वो सब भी इंटीग्रेट किया और फिर माइथोलॉजी uh, तो हमें करना ही था क्योंकि हम लोग अमर चित्र का था और अपने दादी नानी से कहानी कहानियां सुन के बड़े हुए थे लेकिन अब की जो जनरेशन है वैसा उनके पास समय नहीं है और मुझे लगता है इंक्लिनेशन भी कम होता गया तो मुझे लगा वो भी हमें क्लास में इंटीग्रेट करना है म्यूजिक का भी एक सेंस देना था सिखाती नहीं थी क्लास में लेकिन वो एक सेंस क्योंकि मैं बैठ के गाती थी क्लास में हर क्लास में मैं ही बैठ के गाती थी रिकॉर्डर लेके नहीं सिखाती थी तो म्यूजिक का एक सेंस देना ये सब बहुत जरूरी था तो मुझे लगता है कि ट्रेडिशन तो था ये और मैं जो सिखाती थी वो एकदम जो मेरे टीचर्स ने मुझे सिखाया उसी को मैं सिखाती थी लेकिन एक नए अंदाज तो मुझे लिखा दैट इज आल्सो अ ट्रांजिशन ऑफ सॉर्ट्स बिकॉज़ व्हेन यू ट्रांसमिट ट्रेडिशन यू हैव टू बी वेरी केयरफुल यू हैव टू कॉन्टेक्सटुलाइज इट फॉर अ स्टूडेंट अदरवाइज इट सीम्स वेरी एनाक्रोनिस्ट बिकॉज़ एक पुरानी चीज को ऐसे ही आप बता देंगे तो बच्चे नहीं मानेंगे तो एक कॉन्टेक्स्ट देना और एक संदर्भ देना बहुत ज्यादा जरूरी तो मुझे ये समझ आ गया था तो मैंने शुरू किया धीरे-धीरे फिर मेरी अपनी जर्नी जो नृत्य की है वो भी बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग है क्योंकि उस टाइम मैं बहुत एनामर्ड थी बहुत बाकी फॉर्म्स को लेके तो मैंने बहुत सारे कोलैबोरेशंस किए कभी पपेटियर के साथ एक गुगला पूरा प्रोडक्शन किया हर वॉइस जो द्रौपदी पर आधारित था फिर एक प्रोडक्शन किया कई कई रिविजिटिंग ऑल द some of the characters which interested me uh, or wo movement 
डांस डांस मूवमेंट टेक्निक को लेके क्या था उसमें मार्शल आर्ट्स भी था उसमें कुछ और वर्ड्स भी थे वाचिक का भी था तो वो किया फिर कंटेम्प्रेरी uh, आर्ट को लेके उससे रिलेट करके भी दो तीन प्रोडक्शंस किए तो एक दौर मेरे लाइफ में था जहाँ पे आई जस्ट वॉन्टेड टू स्प्रेड माई विंग्स एंड सी वॉट हैपन्स टू डांस when uh, you throw it out and juxtapose it with other forms of expression i started doing a lot of non verbal performances where you would read a poem and just leave it and then i would interpret it in dance in my own vocabulary and um, that was very interesting too because usme music to hota hi tha lekin shabd nahi hote the shabd pehle jo aap sunne hain ऑडियंस उसी को उस उसको एक एक फ्रेम बना के उसमें रंग हम हम हम, हम अपने तरीके से अपने वो को लेके करने की कोशिश नॉन नॉन वो भी एक चैलेंज था मेरे लिए कि वर्बली हम कैसे एक एब्स्ट्रैक्शन इन डांस को कैसे ले जाएं तो वो एक दौर था फिर मैंने बहुत सारे स्टूडेंट्स तैयार कर दिए थे क्योंकि मैं टीचिंग बहुत जल्दी दक्षिणामूर्ति सर ने तो मुझे टीचिंग बहुत जल्दी बिठा दिया था मैं उनके क्लास में सिखाती थी और मुझे सीख सिखाने के लिए उन्होंने सिखाया तो मैं ऐसे ही शुरू नहीं हो गई तो आई वाज ट्रेन टू टीच बाय हिम तो मैंने सिखाना अपना सेटअप भी बहुत जल्दी शुरू किया तो मेरे पास ऑलरेडी क्लास में मैं देखती थी मेरे सीनियर जो डांसर्स डांस करते थे तो मैं देखती थी बहुत केयरफुली ऑब्जर्व करती थी और उसी में मैं देखती थी कि एक ही अड़बू को कितने डिफरेंट तरीके से अलग अलग एंगल से आप देखेंगे वो एक ही अड़बू को एक ही मूवमेंट को तो कितना इंटरेस्टिंग रखता है इन ग्रुप तो मैंने ग्रुप कोरियोग्राफी शुरू कर दी ताकि जो ब्यूटी पॉसिबल है ग्रुप में I agree that classical dance is essentially a solo art form, and I still, I have all after doing all this, I still have come back to the solo, and I love the solo. But group me jo possibility hai, wo bhi hamare time ke hisab se bahut zaruri hai, kyunki ham ek chote se jagah se bahut badi badi jagahon mein ham log performance karte hain. To ek body kabi kabi lost ho jata hai. Classical solo dance ke liye proximity or जो एफ के एक्सप्रेशंस हैं वो सब बहुत पास से आप देखें तो ज़्यादा मज़ा आता है तो जो ग्रुप की का जो कॉन्टेक्स्ट था वो साइट स्पेसिफिक वर्क भी होता था तो बहुत उसमें चैलेंज मैंने एक्सेप्ट किया कि एक साइट एक बहुत पुराना साइट है और एक ग्रैंड आर्किटेक्चर आपके पीछे है आप कैसे आर्ट ऐसे क्रिएट करोगे कि उसके आगे कुछ लगे ये बड़ा भारी चैलेंज है कि आप कैसे एक बहुत ही सुंदर एंशियंट चीज आप घूमते हैं उसको देखते हैं और फिर मैं भूल जाती थी कि मैं कोरियोग्राफी एक कुछ कर भी रही हूँ क्योंकि इतना और इंस्पायरिंग है पीछे और आप उसके आगे कर रहे हैं तो एक सेंस ऑफ हिस्ट्री सेंस ऑफ कंटिन्यूटी सेंस एज दैट 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 पर्टिकुलर मॉन्यूमेंट हैज विटनेस्ड सो मच एंड यू आर ट्राइंग टू क्रिएट समथिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ इट देर सो मेनी थाट्स दैट गो तो ये सब चैलेंजेस थे जो मुझे मौका मिला ये सब करने के लिए और मैं अपने स्टूडेंट्स को लेके भी बहुत ही आई एम सो हैप्पी दैट हैड आई हैड सच कमिटेड स्टूडेंट्स इन नाट्य रिक्शा एंड दे आल्सो ट्रैवल्ड एंड दे परफॉर्म विद मी एंड दे लर्न सो मच क्रिएटिंग वर्क तो ये हमारा एक यूनिक प्रोसेस ऑफ क्रिएशन हाउ डू यू क्रिएट वर्क ये इसका एक सिस्टम बनता गया हाउ फ्रॉम अ स्मॉल आइडिया हाउ डू यू एक्चुअली क्रिएट अ वर्क ऑन स्टेज दैट होल प्रोसेस बहुत सिस्टमेटिकली हम लोग करते हैं उसको उसमें म्यूजिशंस का जो हमारा बहुत आई वॉज आई हैव बीन वेरी लकी विथ म्यूजिशंस दे हैव बीन एक्सट्रीमली सपोर्टिव आई हैड अ सीरीज ऑफ वंडरफुल म्यूजिशंस एंड टूडे ऑल्सो आई हैव टू fabulous musicians who support me sudha raghuraman and um, uh, venkateshwaran k venkateshwaran both fantastic musicians and a young mridangist manohar barachandran who with whom we are working now so i think this is the evolution that i have seen and i have observed um uh, because the tradition you know you have to actually live it to see 
how the tradition has evolved, how the dance has evolved, the dancer has evolved, how the presentation has evolved. But I must say, audiences haven't evolved. No. I think I miss the audiences that I had earlier because they were informed. They were very, um, I would say, they understood rasa. And you know, to get immersed in dance requires time, requires a state of mind. Today, I think we've become frantic. You know, we even as we are sitting in a performance, we need a commercial break after maybe seven or eight minutes. Our attention span has gone down. So for a dancer, I think these are not very healthy signs because dance requires that continuous energy from the audience, that continuous involvement, because it's not a one way process. We can't keep on doing and you know not getting any energy from there. So I think that is something that uh, I feel could be better and we need to invest to create that by again growing, going back to schools and again kind of building up rasikas from schools who can be discerning audience members again and raise the bar of performance. Only if audience is discerning will the bar of performance be raised. If audience level goes down, performance also goes down. So I think that is a worrisome thing for me that I would like to innovate that I can go on and on. I don't know how much time I have because uh, uh, I also was told that I need to do a little presentation. So I was thinking as to what I should uh, do uh, today. So I thought I would do, again, in terms of content, I have uh, been part of the transition because earlier in Bharatanatyam, we used to always have songs or uh, poetry in Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, or in Manipravalam. Malayalam, but uh, uh, I I have been born and brought up in the north, and I've always had a, 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 you know a very cosmopolitan audience, and um, it was not something new because uh, M S Subbulakshmi Amma had already sung uh, Meera at that time uh, and taken Hindi poetry into the fold of Carnatic music, so that showed me paved the way for many dancers. Um, I had a wonderful teacher, subsequent teacher, where, to whom I went to for Abhinaya, Srimati Jamuna Krishnan, who is also, who just passed away last year. And uh, <clears throat> I'll be very grateful to her because she brought in so much poetry into my life. And uh, because of her, I took to Haveli Sangeet, which was the very important aspect of my research work, where uh, uh, this was part of the senior fellowship that I got from the ministry. And uh, took some wonderful compositions from uh, the Haveli Sangeet tradition, which is part of the ritualistic tradition in the temples in UP and in Rajasthan. According to the Ashtayam Seva, you had beautiful compositions which were sung and uh, those I adapted into Bharatanatyam and uh, gave it a format. And, um, you know, poetry is poetry, whether you say it in Telugu or in Tamil or in any other language. I think uh, it is equally possible to do it beautifully with the vocabulary that you're so familiar with. So I felt that um, the, the poetry in Avadi or in Maithi really resounded with the audiences of the North. And that took me to uh, Parmanandji, Maya Ramji, a beautiful composition. Sundara 